But tonight we're going to continue our, our series on hearing God's voice. Hearing God's voice, like you heard this morning, this will be a two-week, four-part series. Tonight is part two of week one, and I'm going to be speaking on this idea of how God speaks, how God speaks, and I'm going to jump right into it. I'm going to preach uh, shortly so that we can practice it and we can spend some time praying and just seeking after God. So we're talking about how God speaks, and the first thing that I want to talk about tonight is through the Word, um, through the Word, and this was talked about a little bit this morning, uh, if you were here this morning, uh, and when, when we talk about Word, we, we're maybe talking about the Bible. I want you to think about this for a moment. How do I view the Bible? How, how, do I, how do I value it? What is my attitude towards the Bible? What is my attitude towards reading the Bible? In Psalm chapter 1, verse 1 through 2, it says, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, is in the Bible, and who meditates on his law, his word, day and night. So here we see this life that is led by the word of God. We see a picture of, the, of this person, a man, a woman, who's meditating on it day and night. They're being led by the word. And because they're being led by the word, because they are in their Bible, they are not finding themselves in sticky situations. They're not finding themselves down the road with the wrong people, find themselves uh, in a place of laziness, in a place of complacency. But because they're meditating on the word, because they're reading their word day and night, it determines where their feet go. It determines what their life looks like, what their mouth speaks, how they spend their time. The Bible should not just be something that that we read, but it should be something that leads. It's not just a book that we read and we check it off our to-do list, but it's something that can lead us through every single day. And when, we, when we're talking about hearing God's voice and we say something like the word, uh, I, wanna, I wanna expand on that just for a moment. That can mean all sorts of things when we're talking about word, all right? We could be talking about uh, Jesus Christ himself. It says that the word became flesh. Jesus is the word. Uh, we're talking about spoken words of God. Throughout history, uh, the father of all creation has spoken words and created everything that we see around us. When we're talking about words, words can come through prophets, through teachers, through people. People can speak to you, and it can be from God. It, it, we see that God chooses to use human lips to proclaim heavenly words. And we also see, like we just talked about, the, the word uh, of God, the written word in Scripture. So we see the word, and the second thing we see is that God can speak to us is he speaks to us through pain, through pain. Anybody here enjoy pain? Like you just like, hey, I like pain. Like, let me, let me take a punch to the face. That sounds like a lot of fun to me, right? But one of the ways that God can communicate to us is through the pains of this world. Pain isn't really a fun thing to talk about. Nobody's like, oh my goodness, I just love to suffer for Jesus. That's so much fun, right? I don't see anybody in here like, yeah, I'm so excited just to, to suffer. We don't like pain. We, we avoid it, but understand that God, he can speak to us through pain. He speaks to us through, through the pains of this world. There's no such thing as if you follow Jesus, you'll live a pain-free life, right? We know that, that that's not true at all. Why? Because we see Christians who are being killed every day because they are Christians, Right? We know that there are Christians who, who are living in Africa and they're dying every day because of unclean drinking water. Just because you're a follower of Jesus doesn't mean you'll have a pain-free life. But we see rather Jesus chooses to speak to us through pain. Pain is important. What, what does pain do? Pain, it warns us. Right? If you've ever like, accidentally touched the stove, it burns a little bit. It's warning you like, hey, if you leave your hand here on the stove, your hand's going to melt off. Right? It gives us a warning. I've heard stories of people who have had some sort of pain in their body, and they go to the doctor, and they find out that there's something seriously wrong with them. That pain, it gave them warning that there's something going on in their body. Pain, it warns us what's going on. Pain, it can also teach us. In James chapter 1, verse 2, it says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. The message version, it says, Consider it a gift when you face trials. Now this idea that, that we should consider it joy, it's, it's an extreme idea, right? That, hey, when you go through a trial, when you're going through heartache, when you're really hurting, consider it a gift. Consider it pure joy. That, now pain isn't something that I consider pure joy. What do I consider pure joy? Maybe you consider this too, eating, right? Anybody with me? Like eating just gives you pure joy. You're like, oh, 
I love to eat. Maybe coffee gives you pure joy, right? Spending time with my wife gives me pure joy. My son, making a son gives me pure joy. Uh, oh, I'm not allowed to talk about it. I'm married. It's fine. Uh, my team winning like they did not do today and like they hardly ever do, that gives me joy, right? There's all sorts of things that, that give me joy. And when I think of pain, I don't instantly jump into this idea of like, oh, pain, yes, that's so much fun. It's pure joy. But we see it, that pain, it teaches us. We, we learn from pain. It says, consider it pure joy. Consider it a gift whenever you face trials of many kinds. Verse three says, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Testing, we're, we're learning something, right? At school, you take a test on what you just learned. We're, we're being tested. And if we don't go through pain, we don't learn perseverance. And the Bible says that without perseverance, that we aren't complete. Believe it or not, pain can be good. Pain, it can be good, but it's only good based on what you do with that pain. Maybe you're here and you've gone through this. Maybe you know someone and they've gone through a divorce and that, that's painful. And because they've gone through a divorce, maybe they've pulled themselves away, they've isolated themselves, they've not allowed themselves to go into another relationship after that. Maybe, maybe uh, you ha- you've had a dream and you've had a dream to do something big and that dream, it didn't come to pass. And now, whenever you see someone else following their dreams, whenever you see someone else doing something big, you find that you're just sitting back and criticizing. Maybe a friend talked bad about you, a friend betrayed you, and now you're isolating yourselves and you're not making any new friends. Pain, it, it can hurt us, but pain, it can also grow us. And what it is is that people, when they go through pain, rather than letting pain refine it, they let, refine them, they let it define them. As we go through pain, we need to let it refine us, not define us. So as you go through whatever that trial is, you need to, to learn from it. Don't let it define who you are. Our pain from God, it warns us, it directs us, it leads us, it, it guides us, and through our pain, we can see that God is speaking to us. God is speaking to us. So we see God, he speaks to us through word, through the Bible, through someone speaking, through God speaking, through Jesus when he was here on earth speaking. We see that, that God speaks to us through pain, through trials, through hard, hard times, but it's based on what we do with those things that allows God to speak to us. And the third thing I want to look at is God speaks to us through voice, through verbal, and specifically through whispering. In 1 Kings chapter 19, starting in verse 11, we see a prophet named Elijah, and he has this encounter with God. Starting in verse 11, it says, the Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. If you didn't know uh, my wife, Maren, and I are going to be having a baby here in just three weeks from Tuesday. She's due with a baby. It's our second baby. And after having our first and now looking at our second, I feel like we have a better idea of what things we need for a baby, right? If you've ever had a baby before, the first baby, you feel like you need everything. Like you go to the baby section at the store and you're like, all right, I'll take three of everything that's here, right? I need these passies and these ones and these bottles and these blank. Like you want the best of the best, the best rocker, the best stroller, all of that stuff. But now having our second one, we feel like we have a better idea of what we really need. And one thing that we use every day at our house is this thing called a sound machine. Anybody use a sound machine out there. Anybody know what, that, know what a sound machine is, right? A sound machine, it's this really cool thing. It's something that you can plug in, and guess what it does? It makes sound, all right? Revolutionary, right? Not like a boom box like my dad was preaching about earlier. It's just this little thing you plug in, and you can listen to the waves crash against the rocks. You can lis- listen to the wind. You can just listen to white noise. Whatever you're into, you just listen to that, and it just kind of lulls you to sleep. And the idea is that that noise that's constantly going on, that it drowns out everything else that's going on. So we turn on the white noise for my son Barrett when he's going to bed. That way, whenever there's like a TV on, whenever someone's talking downstairs, it, that noise is just kind of going so he doesn't hear what's, what's going on elsewhere, so it doesn't wake him up. 
what I found is that there's mornings that I'll go in and after Barrett wakes up and I'll change his diaper, I'll change his clothes and I'll take him downstairs and later I'll come upstairs and I'll realize that this noise was just going this whole time. Like it's so loud up there and it's just, it's going and it's going far beyond what it was needed for, far beyond what it was intended for. And I think in our lives there's lots of noise that's going on far beyond what is needed for. There's lots of noise that's just continually going and going and going, and it's so loud that it just kind of drowns everything out. And it might not be a, a bad thing necessarily. It could be good things, right? Like the, the, the sound machine isn't a bad thing, right? It, it lulls you to sleep, but maybe that's what some of the noises of this world have done is that they've kind of just lulled you to sleep, and now you're sleeping on God as he's trying to speak to you. Now there's different things that are coming, and, and we can't hear God because everything else is so loud. And what I found is that when life gets too loud, rather than turning everything else down and and listening for for what God's trying to speak to us, we revert to looking for God, not just listening to what God's. And yeah, God can show us stuff through signs, but we know that that, uh, it says that faith comes through hearing. And we, we grow by hearing. God is trying to speak to us. But I think so many of us, we've got this sound machine on called life and it's just roaring and roaring and roaring, and we, we tune it out. But we listen to a lot of things. We can listen constantly. We live in a time where you can listen to everything, music, podcasts, you can listen to books, right? Who would have ever thought that when books were first written, that you'd just be plugging them in and you could listen to a book, right? You, you can listen to all sorts of stuff, and it's easy to listen. I can be listening to a song on my phone in my house, and then I walk out and I get in my truck, and as soon as I start my truck up, it just picks up the Bluetooth and it, it starts going in my truck and then I get out of my truck and I put my AirPods in and it just continues that same song right where I was at. Then I open up my computer and it just continues playing. Like we can be listening to stuff all the time. And the things, like I said, that we're listening to, they can even be good things. You could be listening to sermons. You can be listening to worship music. And all that is good, but it is not enough to satisfy our soul. And all those things, it, it can just tune out. And maybe you're looking for God, and you're looking for God to, to speak to you, speak something new to you, and you're like, all right, I'm going to listen to this sermon on this topic, because I think that's what God's trying to speak to me. I'm going to listen to this worship music, so that way God can speak to me. But maybe God's just trying to speak to you just through his voice, just through his whisper. Not through someone else's voice, not through someone else's song, but God's trying to whisper to you. He's trying to speak something to you. In this, in this verse, we read about this, this guy Uh, named Elijah. And we see he's in a situation in his life where he is desperate for God. And and we see that he he has this encounter with God. And first, there's a wind that comes. And then there's this earthquake and then a fire. All these places that you'd expect God, the creator of the world, to be in all of these things that happen. But he's not in any of those. Rather, he's in the whisper. He's in in this quiet moment. And I started wondering, why would God choose to speak to us through a whisper. And here's the definition of whisper. It's to speak very softly using one's breath without one's vocal cords, especially for the sake of privacy. If you didn't know what a whisper is, now you know. It's like when you talk really quiet like this. But one word that stood out to me in this definition is the word breath. When I think of breath, I think back to to Genesis, where God breathes life, where God creates the whole world with his breath. And God is trying to to whisper. He's trying to give breath. He's trying to give life. He's trying to create something new, create something, build dreams in your heart if we would just learn to listen to the whisper. If we just learn to listen for God speaking to us. And I want to just ask you a couple questions tonight to help guide you, to help see how can I better hear God's voice? How can I better be in tune with the whisper of God? And I'm going to ask you a few questions We're going to talk about them for a moment, and then we're going to spend some time just seeking after God. The first question is this. What is the loudest voice in your life? What's the loudest voice in your life? In youth, we say this phrase, show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Anybody ever heard that before? Right? All that is saying is the loudest voice in your life will dictate where you go in life. Right? Not necessarily the loudest, like, decibel-wise, because I know some loud people that are in my life and I don't listen to anything. That, how, who knows that the loudest person is usually the one that you don't listen to, right? But 
Who has the most say in what's going on in your life? What it boils down to is who, who has your attention? Who has your attention? Is it your spouse? Is it a friend? Is it a coworker? Your boss? Is it your kids? How do we make God's voice the loudest voice in our life? Because that's really what we all want. That's what we should want, is that God's voice would be the loudest voice in my life. That it's not through someone else, it's not through someone preaching, it's not through someone teaching, but God's voice be the loudest voice. And, and here's how we, we have God's voice to be the loudest voice, is we have a continual relationship with him. We're constantly in relationship, we're constantly talking to him, we're listening to him. We're in, in the word, right? That's one of the ways that he speaks to us. We're, we're constantly reading our Bible, and we're not just reading it, but it's leading us. And, and that's how we make God uh, the loudest voice, is we have this relationship with him. Second question is this, when, where, and how do I listen? When, where, and how do I listen? Think about this. If I was to ask you to go to lunch with me this week to talk about something, and we set, we set a time, we set a day, like, we're going to meet Thursday at noon to get lunch, and we're going to talk, but we never said a location. We never said where we're going to go to lunch. Would we ever meet? No, right? We, we have to have a time. We have to have a, a date. We have to have the location. We have to have the when, where, right? We have to have all of these, these things. We need to set the place, set the time, and, but if we don't have, but we can have the place, and we can have the time, but our priority can be on something else. There's many times that I'll set up time to be with God, to, to, to be in prayer, and I'm like, all right, I've got 30 minutes right now. I'm just gonna spend some time just praying, and I, I have the time, I have the place. It's all set, I'm there, and then all of a sudden I, I'm like praying, and I think, oh man, I need to text Pastor Brian back about something. And then I get on my phone, and I text, oh, I need to text this person back about it, and then, and then, it's, and then it's gone. Or I think, oh man, I need to do this later. Before I forget, I'm gonna write that down. Oh, and I need to do this, and I just end up creating a whole to-do list. So not only do we need to create like a, a, a time, a place, but we also need to set a priority. We need to set you know, boundaries with it. Maybe that's getting rid of our phone when we're praying. Maybe that's you know, going into a closet where there's nothing else that's gonna distract us. Maybe if you're really into clothes, a closet's not the place for you, all right? But where is that place? What's that time? Maybe it's waking up really early in the morning. Maybe it's, it's going on a walk outside. May, what, whatever that is, we need to set a time, a place, and we need to have a priority that comes with it. And the third thing that I want to look at is this, is ask yourself this question. Do I believe God will speak? When you're trying to hear, when you're trying to listen to God's whisper, you need to ask yourself, do I believe God will speak, because when you believe it, there's an expectation that happens. If you don't believe that God's gonna speak to you, then you're never gonna hear him speak to you. But you have to believe it, you have to have this expectation, I believe God's gonna speak to me, I believe God has something for me. If we don't believe it, it's, it's not gonna happen. We, ha we need to have the sensitivity to the voice of God. We need to learn what his voice sounds like. We need to learn what that whisper is like. And when, when you have that sensitivity, you can see God working in and through your life when you're in tune with it, when you're expecting, we're saying, God, how are you speaking to me through this? You'll see how he's working. Know this, that you are a son, you are a daughter of God, and he wants to speak to his kids. He wants his kids to speak to them, just like if you're a parent, or just like if you have a parent. Right? There's that relationship, and God wants to have that relationship. And when you believe that God speaks to you, you'll see that it changes how you talk to him, it changes your faith, it changes your expectations. So God, just a few of the ways that God speaks to us is, is through words, verbal words, written words, through pain, through people. And as you continue through this series and as we spend some time here in prayer, maybe God will, throughout this week, speak to you a different way. But tonight, I just, I ended early, all right? I ended 20 minutes earlier than what we normally end because I intentionally wanted to have us spend some time with God. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pray here in just a moment, and then the service is, is done, but this room is open for you to pray, for you just to listen to that voice. If you need to go, you can go. But what God wants to speak to you is far more important, far better than anything I could say, anything anybody else could say. 
So we're just going to take some time, and we're going to seek after God, and we're going lis- to listen for that whisper. Jesus, I thank you that you're a God that wants to speak to us. I thank you that we don't have to do some sort of big, crazy thing to get your attention, to get you to speak to us, but we can just ask, we can just listen. And I pray that tonight, God, that, that you would just speak something new for those who are doubting, God, that they would have a, a belief, that they'd have an expectation that I, I believe that you will speak to me. I believe that you want to speak to me. And I pray that they would get something new tonight. That you would build dreams and hearts. That we'd see visions. And that you just fill us with your love. We give you this this time, this evening, pray you'd block out any distractions, any cell phone notifications, and that you would just speak to us tonight. In your name we pray, amen.